Welcome to the MOOC's course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Synthesis Gas. So, before going into the details of today's lecture, what we will be doing? We will be doing a kind of recapitulation of what we have studied in last two classes. In last two classes, we have seen a few basics of uh, fuel and industrial gases and then what is the requirement that why should we start uh, studying about fuel gas and then industrial gases ahead of uh, you know manufacturing processes of any of inorganic chemicals which is the main content of the course. The such kind of reasons we have seen because we understand this fuel gases and industrial gases almost all used in uh, most of the inorganic and chemical industries one way or other way. So, that is the reason we should have a kind of information about this fuel and industrial gases as well. So, that is what we have seen a few basics. Uh, of uh, fuel and industrial gases. Then what we have done? We have uh, categorized uh, the different types of fuel gases and then we start discussing manufacturing process of different types of industrial gases. That is raw materials, manufacturing processes, engineering problems and economics associated with uh, producer gas, water gas or blue gas, coke oven gas, natural gas, liquefied petroleum gas. This is what we have uh, studied in detail completely. And then about the synthesis gas also we started in the previous lecture where we have uh, studied a few basics of synthesis gas and then uh, how many methods of production of uh, synthesis gas available in the uh, different types of chemical plants nowadays those things we have seen out of which we have discussed steam reforming of naphtha uh, process to get the synthesis gas and then different routes based on the different products that are that you are willing to have. Whether you want to have CO plus H2 synthesis gas or H2 hydrogen synthesis gas or ammonia synthesis gas based on that one three different approaches, three different alternatives we have seen in the steam gas production by steam reforming of naphtha. We, ha we have also seen uh, what is naphtha and then uh, you know different types of uh, you know da uh, aliphatic and aerophatic naphtha etc. those details also we have seen in the previous lecture. Right? However, this lecture is also based on synthesis gas. So, then we have a kind of a uh, introductory information once again about the synthesis gas that is it is a variable mixture of CO plus H2 and then it is useful for uh, synthesis of several organic components such as methane. Then, uh, uh, paraffinic and olefinic hydrocarbons varying from methane to waxes along with few oxygenated com compounds using fischer tropsch method by varying CO to H2 ratio between 0.5 to 2 and then uh, synols which is a common terminology for a straight chain normal alcohols. And these can be obtained by uh, CO to CO carbon monoxide to H2 ratio between 0.3 to 0.5 whereas methanol. Uh, by having this ratio to uh, uh, 0.3 and then higher alcohols up to CN alcohol synthesis etc. can also be done by using synthesis gas. Uh, we can also produce saturated branched hydrocarbons by isosynthesis by having this ratio of CO and H2 uh, 0.5. Then oxosynthesis Ox that is oxygenated hydrocarbons something like saldehydes, alcohols etc. can also be produced by maintaining CO uh, divided by H2 ratio of 1.2 value. And obviously, these are a kind of simplification simple information that we are giving. If you go in specific about each of these processes, the temperature, pressure and catalyst would be there, they would be varying from one to other. Okay? Now, what we will be doing? We will be having a kind of uh, different types of catalysts that are used to uh, get such kind of uh, organics as shown above and then what are the temperature and pressure conditions. Let us say if you wanted to produce methane, you need to have a nickel catalyst. Temperature may be 250 to 500 degrees centigrade and then uh, pressure may be 1 atmospheric pressure is sufficient. But if you wanted to apply Fischer-Tropsch approach to get different types of chemicals, you need to have a catalyst like a cobalt, nickel, iron at temperature 180 to uh, 300 degrees centigrade or this is the process temperature and then pressure may be 1 to 30 atmospheres. Whereas, in order to produce uh, cyanols, uh, then you may need to have a catalyst like iron catalyst, temperature between 185 to 225 degrees centigrade and then pressure may be between 15 to 30 atmosphere. For methanol, uh, for methanol production, you need to have a catalyst ZNO 
zinc oxide, copper oxide or chromium oxide these catalysts are required temperature may be between 250 to 350 degrees centigrade whereas the pressure is very high pressure required that is uh, 100 to 100 to 300 atmospheres right. If you wanted to uh, produce higher alcohols from the synthesis then iron plus alkali catalyst may be required. Temperature may not be uh, temperature is in the range of 400 to 500 degrees centigrade and then pressure is again between 100 to 300 atmospheric pressures. For isosynthesis the catalysts are provided like ZNO, Al2O3, alumina etc. The temperature may be between 400 to 450 degrees centigrade and then pressure is 100 to 300 atmospheres. Whereas oxosynthesis uh, you need to have a, a cobalt carbonate catalyst right temperature is not that high that is 150 to 200 degree centigrade is sufficient but the pressure is very high that is to uh, 150 to 200 atmospheric so what you can see here from uh, uh, for producing methanol or higher alcohols, isosynthesis, oxosynthesis components, you need to have higher pressure conditions, okay, if you wanted to produce them from the synthesis gas, fine. So now, what are the different types of production methods? Uh, we have seen there are two uh, major uh, methods, one is from petroleum hydrocarbons, if you are using petroleum hydrocarbons or natural resources or something like a natural gas etc., then we have two methods. Uh, if you are producing this from coal or coke, then we have uh, two methods. From petroleum hydrocarbons, one method is the reforming, steam reforming of naphtha. There are three routes for uh, three products, alternative that is three alternatives that are there that we have already seen that is syngas if you wanted to have CO plus H2, if you have if you need to produce H2 synthesis gas, if you need to produce ammonia synthesis gas then three different alternatives are there from the same process. Depending on your requirement you can choose the set of uh, you know the flow sheet that we have discussed in the previous class. This is we have already discussed in the previous class. Today we are going to discuss how to produce synthesis gas by partial combustion method. So, what are the raw materials, what are the reactions, what are the quantitative requirements, process flow sheet and then process economics etc. These things we are going to see in today's lecture, right. Previously we have also seen from coal or coke we can produce water gas or water gas and coke oven gas as well, okay. So before going into the details of production of uh, synthesis gas by uh, partial combustion of uh, naphtha or uh, natural gas and what we do, we will be having a kind of a uh, discussion about major engineering problems uh, in production of syngas by steam reforming of naphtha that we have seen yesterday. What we have seen in yesterday, there is a, uh, a reformer which is uh, provided with uh, steel tubes, we have a nickel catalyst. Right? And then this reactor is maintained at high temperature. So, preheated uh, naphtha enters this reactor and then when they enter into the reactor, reforming reactions take place and then CO, H2, CO2, etc. are produced. That is what we have seen. So, then uh, sulphur may be present in the uh, feed. What, what is the feed that we have taken? We have taken a hydrocarbon vapor feed. That is what the feed that we have taken for this. Uh, steam reforming of uh, naphtha. So, these hydrocarbons should be purified, they should be purified. If there is a sulphur at all, in general in most of the petroleum crude sulphur is present. So, if it is present in the crude, so then during the subsequent operations in the product sulphide, hydrogen sulphide and other sulphides are uh, going to be present. So, that one has to make sure. So, if sulphur is present in the feed material itself, so that is going to hamper the process. Uh, uh, dearly in the case of a uh, synthesis gas production by steam reforming, uh, by steam reforming. That is the reason one has to make sure that in the uh, feed, hydrocarbon vapor feed whatever we are taking, there should not be sulphur more than 5 ppm. So, that is the reason naphtha should be purified by catalytic hydro treatment prior to the uh, steam reforming so that to avoid 
uh, this sulfur uh, presence of sulfur in the feed okay it should not be more than uh, 5 ppm in the feed okay so naphtha feed whatever is there before using it for the steam reforming to get synthesis gas that has to be properly hydro treated that catalytic hydro treatment has to be done that is reacting of naphtha using hydrogen in the presence of catalyst so that hydrogen reacts with the sulfur uh, present in the uh, 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 this naphtha and then it produces H2S or other sulphide gases which can be uh, removed easily right. Then after that uh, the naphtha or purified uh, hydrocarbons vapor whatever is there uh, you have to check whether the uh, sulphur is how much it is there if it is less than 5 ppm then you can take it to the uh, steam reforming reaction to produce the synthesis gas. Second one is the design of efficient reformer furnace to economically supply endothermic heat of reaction. Uh, previous class we have seen different types of reactions uh, uh, in the uh, steam reforming of naphtha case to produce synthesis gas right. So, there are two endothermic reactions are there so that the heat should be supplied to the uh, reaction so that to take those two reactions because those are endothermic reactions. But we have seen that lot of heat is evolved uh, in the process so that should be properly designed I mean plant has to be designed properly so that to uh, so that to take or consider uh, you know collect that heat properly and then supply it to the endothermic uh, uh, reactions. So, such a way one has to do efficient design of a reformer furnace. Then anyway any of the reactions that you uh, take with naphtha, naphtha you take or any hydrocarbons you take and then you do the reactions at high temperature there is a possibility of carbon. Uh, formation mostly there is a possibility of carbon formation. What is the problem if it forms it when the carbon forms it deposit it get deposited on the surface of the catalyst and then catalyst get deactivated and then subsequent reaction or the primary reactant slows down that is the major concern. So, you should select such a catalyst so that the carbon formation is negligible almost negligible or it is 0 such a catalyst you have to uh, choose for the process. Right. Then removal of CO2 and then CO because we know that process if you are required to do the synthesis gas production this plant if you wanted to operate in order to produce uh, high concentrate hi or highly purified hydrogen then this CO2 and CO has to be removed. So, then how efficiently are you removing that is going to be uh, very essential. Okay. So, bulk of CO2 is absorbed by either potassium carbonate or monoethanol amine solutions okay that is what we have seen ethanol amine solutions we have seen in the previous class okay uh, they are used for uh, uh, absorbing the co2 that is present in the effluent gas of the furnace okay so but this uh, solution requires more heat but has higher driving force for absorption giving smaller towers that is you can use smaller towers and then you can have a kind of higher driving force for the absorption so that more absorption can take place but it requires more heat. So, then one has to make a trade off right. If you are if in the process itself there are several uh, streams may be there where heat may be evolving. So, if you can effectively collect and then supply uh, wherever it is required for such kind of uh, absorption then it is fine otherwise you have to make a trade off between should you go for this MEA solution or potassium carbonate or any other solution like that that is another issue. And then final traces of CO, CO2 can be removed by methanation reaction a reverse of steam reforming reaction is taking place. So, what is the problem right? the first of all uh, after uh, CO conversion in uh, CO by shift conversion by shift converter CO has been converted to CO2 and then but still there are some traces of CO uh, would be there along with the CO2 and then when you remove the CO2 using the solution CO2 most of it is removed. But still after that also some traces of CO and CO2 would be present along with the H2 right. If you are if you wanted to produce high purity H2 then they should not be there even in traces. Then methanation is one of the best possibility but you know here using we actually you are producing this 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 you wanted to remove these traces because you wanted to produce high purity H2. But again you are using the same high purity H2 to remove these traces only traces of CO and CO2 that is one limitation right. Another limitation is that it is forming methane. Though methane is not uh, going to be 
uh, you know disadvantages but if you wanted to have a pure hydrogen so then obviously it is going to be a kind of treated as impurity okay so that is another limitation of uh, this uh, this method okay for high purity H2 sometimes you may need to use ammonium copperous formate or molecular sieves which again increases the cost of production okay so these are the some uh, major engineering problems associated with the steam reforming of naphtha to produce syngas syngas either co plus h2 or only h2 or h2 plus n2 syngas uh, synthesis uh, ammonia synthesis gas whatever you want to produce right so these are the issues one has to handle carefully even even if it is the beginning of the plant designing and installation or even during the operation of a existing plant one has to be careful about such kind of problems okay there may be more number of problems associated with any uh, plant but in general whatever the problems that we are discussing in the course uh, at the end of each uh, chemical production you know they are major engineering problems so they may be common for almost all plants so then one has to be uh, aware of such kind of engineering problems okay so now we see synthesis gas production by partial combustion okay now first we see chemical reactions ch4 reacts with o2 to give co2 and 2h2o two moles of oxygen we are utilizing and then ch4 reacting with water giving rise to co plus 3h2 and then another possible reaction is ch4 reacting with uh, already produced co2 giving rise to co and 2h2 right so these are the reactions possible in the uh, uh, gas generator reactor that we are going to uh, see which is often used for the partial combustion of a natural gas partial combustion of natural gas or hydrocarbons uh, you know sometimes other hydrocarbons also used so if you are using them in the uh, gas generator reactor so then these kind of reactions are possible the net reaction is that 3CH4 plus 2O2 giving rise to 3CO H2O plus 5H2 and then steam may be adjusted or provided such a way that delta H of the reaction is approximately 0. Right? This ratio CO2 H2 can also be lowered by adding extra steam to give water gas shift reaction and then that reaction is reversible it is known to everyone. Right? So these are the possible reaction that occur in the uh, uh, gas generator reactor chamber okay, where partial combustion of a feed material is taking place. So what is the feed that we are taking from as per these reactions we are taking natural gas. So based on the reactions what we can understand one of the important raw material is lower purity natural gas. You do not need to have high purity natural gas, lower purity natural gas is sufficient for you to produce synthesis gas. Then economical liquid hydrocarbons can also be used, uh, hydrocarbons which are not very expensive they can also be used uh, in the partial combustion uh, method to produce uh, this uh, synthesis gas. Okay? Low purity grade tonnage oxygen is required, then steam is required small makeup quantities of obviously catalyst and solutions are required for absorption reaction and absorption respectively so promoted iron oxide shift converter catalyst is required ethanol amines and then ammonical cuprous format solutions are required for the absorption the shift converter is required let us say rather having co plus h2 if you wanted to have more h2 then what you do you do the water gas shift reaction and then the co converts to CO2 and then the CO2 gets absorbed by ethanol amine solutions or ammonical cuprous format. That is after that uh, you know uh, partial combustion reaction chamber most of the methods or the you know, separation purification methods are uh, more or less similar to what we have seen in the previous method of steam reforming. Quantitative requirements, this is very essential. Let us say if you wanted to produce 99 percent or more than 99 percent pure hydrogen and then if you wanted to produce 100 
normal cubic meters of such hydrogen, then uh, how much naphtha is required around 29.2 kg. If you are using natural gas, then how much it is required? Methane 35 normal cubic meters required, steam 104 kg, oxygen 26 normal cubic meters, cooling water 8 tons, electricity 0.7 kilowatt hour required and then plant capacity is little less 10 to 200 tons per day if you are intended to have hydrogen only not CO plus H2 but only H2. But if you wanted to have CO plus H2 then capacity is quite high that is 1 lakh to 16 lakhs normal cubic meters per day of synthesis gas. Okay? Now, first we see the process description because as I mentioned process description after the partial combustion reaction taking place in a uh, gas generator reactor, the separation sections are more or less same as what we have seen in the previous class where steam reforming of naphtha has been studied, discussed in order to get synthesis gas. Okay? So, that is the reason we are first seeing the process, first we see process description. The feed material hydrocarbon or methane whatever you are taking as a feed and then oxygen which you are taking low grade oxygen that is as described in raw material. Separately individually you take and then heat them and then mix at 550 degrees centigrade and feed to a burner in a refractory lined furnace which we call gas generator. So now here this bur burner design is going to be very essential, you need to have a very stable burner because this when the feed and oxygen are coming, so obviously that burn uh, whatever the flame produced by the burner is not going to be stable. So you have to design such a way that you know uh, it has to be stable. Okay? And then after the reaction whatever the components that are produced are CO, H2, and CO2 primarily or whatever the effluent gas after the gas generator that you get um, primarily CO, H2 and CO2 there may be some traces of CH4 and then sulphides etc. also uh, may be there depending on the feed that you are taken how pure it is. Right? So, these gases would be at very high temperature at 1100 degree centigrade something like that. So, such gases at such, these gases at such high temperatures are very dangerous. So, then what you have to do? You have to quench them immediately after the reactor when they come out as effluent, you quench them to lower temperature 430 degree centigrade using the water quenching process. Right? And then once the gases, they are still the same gases, after this step, uh, step also same gases are there, but now they are at lower temperature at 430 degree centigrade. Right? Then these gases, now these are the you know product gases let us say, primarily these, these things are you know making up to almost like uh, more than 90 percent of uh, gas effluents are having CO, H2 and CO2. Now whether you need H2 or uh, you need CO plus H2 or you wanted to uh, take it to the uh, ammonia synthesis plant so that to have uh, N2 plus 3 H2. These kind of things depending on your requirement, you know different steps are there. But now we, uh, there is another uh, alternative is also there because once hydrogen is produced so then you can use it in the ammonium synthesis anyway. So, but here acetylene production is the another uh, possibility. Uh, like compared to the previous steam reforming method that we have seen. In the steam reforming method, we have option only for H2, CO plus H2 and then uh, N2 plus 3 H2. These three gases uh, combination is only possible. Now, here acetylene production is also possible, right? Depending on what is your uh, aim, so you the process steps would change, right? If you wanted to have H2 root or that means if you wanted to produce more H2, then what you have to do? Out of these uh, three components, this CO whatever is there that you convert to the CO2 by water gas shift reactor by passing through a shift converter. So that you know primarily then you will be having H2 plus CO2 plus some traces of CO should be there but negligible. Okay? Then this CO2 if you absorb in some solution then pure H2 you will be having. So that is the step that we are going to follow. That is steam is mixed with product gas and fed to shift converter to produce more H2 from 
CO, right? Amine absorption of CO2 is followed by caustic scrubbing to remove uh, whatever the CO2 is there in the uh, mixture of H2 plus CO2, right? And then whatever the traces of CO and then CO2 are there, they can be removed by either ammonical cuprous formate or liquid nitrogen scrubbing approaches. Purified H2 can be used as it is or mixed with gaseous nitrogen from the air separation plant for ammonia synthesis, right? If you wanted to have CO plus H2 route so that to get a synthesis gas um, for, uh, with a various uh, you know ratio of CO plus H2 only without any CO2, then what you have to do? You just bypass that water gas shift converter and then remove CO2 by absorption, that is it. Shift converter is bypassed only amine scrubbing to remove CO2 is utilized. Then acetylene route, in some cases gas generator is optimized for acetylene production. In this case the product gas is treated with dimethyl formamide to remove acetylene and polymers before further COH2 processing is to be done. And then what are the engineering problems? Here as I mentioned correct design of burner for flame stabilization in gas generator is very, very essential. Based on the stability of the flame, the product composition of CO2, CO and H2 is going to change that is present in the effluent gas of the, from the gas generator that is coming from the gas generator, okay? So it is very much essential. Other two problems are similar like uh, for, similar compared to the previous method of steam reforming method. What are they? Removal of traces of uh, impurities like CO, CO2, right? And then handling of deposited carbon. Right? So, you uh, removal for this removal you may be using expensive sol uh, solutions or solvents and then our uh, molecular sieves etc. So, that makes process expensive. Even if you are doing methanation reaction to uh, convert them into methane or something like that, then that methane is going to be present as impurity. Such kind of problems are there in the previous method and this method also there. And then as I mentioned the carbon formation, if the reaction is occurring is at high temperature then is a common problem any of the organic synthesis that you do for uh, if you are doing at high temperatures and high pressures. So then that carbon if it get deposited on the catalyst surface, catalyst will de deactivate it and then reaction progress may not be there. So then for that reason what you have to do? You have to choose a catalyst such a way that in, in a given particular process the carbon formation would be negligible. Now same thing whatever we describe the process we, uh, we can discuss through flow sheet here, okay? So the process description is given there and uh, now we are uh, going to see the same thing by flow sheet, okay? So we take hydrocarbon feed and then heat it to certain temperature at certain uh, uh, pressure conditions as per the requirement. How do we do? We uh, pass it through a uh, chamber by you through which flue gas and then airs are flowing at certain as per the required temperature, right? And then what you do? Separately you take low purity oxygen from air separation plant and then you heat it, preheat, right? So the hydrocarbons and then oxygen separated from air separation plant are individually preheated to certain high temperature and mixed at 550 degree centigrade before feeding to the gas generator reactor. So gas generator is the chamber in which the partial combustion of feed is taking place, right? When this partial combustion is taking place, we will be getting H2CO and CO2 along with some impurities like methane and sulphides, etc. So primarily H2CO and CO2 would be there, right? So these would be at high temperature like you know 1100 degree centigrade or something like that these gases at certain such high temperatures are going to be very dangerous. So then immediately you do, you what you do? You quench them. So you take a tower, pass these uh, gases from the bottom of the tower and from the top you spray the water, cool water so that the temperature immediately fall down to 430 degrees centigrade, right? So but the composition is still same, primarily H2, CO and then CO2. So these gases, if you wanted to produce acetylene, so then there is a separate route, right? So many approaches are there, so many. We have already seen in week one lecture, so alternative approaches. So there we have seen for acetylene so many methods are there. 
So, we are not going to uh, discuss how to produce uh, ethylene from this combination of effluent gas, right. So, that is uh, not required as per the you know this week's lecture that is required in an organic chemical technology separate course, okay. Other thing is that uh, let us say if you wanted to have CO and H2 only, then what you do? You take these gases H2, CO, CO2 gases through this approach, bypass the reactor, right, and then you do the scrubbing using uh, in absorption column, you scrub the H2, CO, CO2, whatever are there those gases at 430 degree centigrade and 14 atmosphere you pass through absorption column where ethanol amine solutions are produced, uh, where ethanol amine solutions are provided so that to absorption of CO2 can be taken place or CO2 may be absorbed into those solutions, right. So, once CO2 is absorbed, so then you may be having only CO and then H2 almost 99 percent. So, this CO and H2 you can collect it as synthesis gas, right. So, this solution is you know you cannot have uh, you know tons per day of solution for the simple absorption. So, what you do? You have to recycle it. Whatever this spent solution or diluted solution where CO2 is being absorbed, so that you take it to the stripper section, right. In the stripper section, you uh, remove the CO2 from the you know solution, right. Absorption and stripper are opposite. Absorption is absorbing the gas into the liquid, stripping is you know removing the gas from the liquid. So, once you remove the uh, CO2 uh, from the liquid, that liquid you can take back to the absorber. So, that this uh, recycling of uh, solution takes place and then you do not need large quantities of uh, you know solution for this absorption alone, okay. So, two alternatives we have seen acetylene production alternative and then synthesis gas CO plus H2 production we have seen. Let us say if you wanted to have pure hydrogen synthesis gas, then what you have to do after this scrubbing section? What you do? This uh, effluent gas at 430 degree centigrade, that effluent gas is having H2, CO and CO2, that you take to CO converter which is at 400 degree centigrade and then iron catalyst is present. Here what happens in this uh, converter CO would be converted to the CO2, CO would be converted to the CO2. So, primarily output or effluent gases of the CO converters are H2 and then CO2 only. Traces of CO anywhere, anywhere they may be there. So, then after this uh, converter then process is same, you take it to the CO2 absorber and then once from the CO2 absorber. CO2 is uh, removed, so then pure H2 would be there. So, then that pure H2 with only traces of CO2, you know, you can get and then that you can subsequently take to the caustic scrubbing or CO scrubber using the cuprous, ammonium cuprous format solution separately to further purify the hydrogen, okay. So, let us say if you take it to the uh, caustic scrubber, so here you are using NaOH solution and then this hydrogen gas with traces of CO, CO2 are, pass, are allowed to pass through this uh, scrubber from the bottom and from the top you are taking NaOH solution. So, in this solution what happens? Whatever the traces of CO, CO2 are there, they will be absorbed uh, within NaOH and then uh, NaOH along with the sodium carbonate some type, some kind of reaction with the NaOH and then CO2 may take place and then sodium carbonate may form. Right. So, those things are collected from the bottom. From the top after removing this CO, CO2 they are collected and then dried and then sent to a nitrogen wash tower even if uh, further some uh, CO, CO2 etc. are uh, still present the EFs of even after casting a scrubber then you can pass it through a nitrogen wash tower where liquid nitrogen is provided from the top to remove the CO and then almost like pure 99 percent or more than 99 percent H2 you get as a synthesis gas that you can collect, right. So, here whatever the uh, liquid nitrogen used for the absorption of traces of CO, CO2 that will be again diluted. So, then what you have to do? You have to pass through a steam chamber and then recover the waste N2. 
whatever the gases are there let us say they should be taken onto the dryer and then fed back to the nitrogen wash tower further for the further uh, purification of those gases. Okay? Let us say uh, you take alternative approach of uh, purifying H2 through uh, CO scrubber. So, here this is the alternative approach. So, here what you do? The effluent H2 with traces of uh, CO, CO2 are taken to the CO scrubber where ammonium cuprous formate solution is provided from the top and then these gases are provided or allowed to pass through this uh, scrubber from the bottom. So, in the counter current way they interact and then this CO is being absorbed into the solution. So, then uh, spent solution whatever is there that is collected from the bottom and then sent to the regenerator and then from the regenerator that is again you know provided to the scrubber from the top again. So, the same solution is recycled here also. Okay. So, after this step again almost like 99 percent pure H2 you will be having that H2 is again collected as a H2 synthesis gas which is having more than 99 percent purity. So, this H2 may be combined with the gases into which is obtained from air suppression unit and then uh, one part of N2 and three parts of H2 are mixed to get ammonia synthesis gas that is separate ones. Okay. So, now see only after this reactor or gas generator after this step so many alternatives are there depending on your requirement. It is not like that each synthesis gas uh, plant which is based on the partial oxidation is having all of them. If your aim is to get hydrogen only so then you avoid other things. If your aim is only to get COH2 why to waste your money on the installation and operation of so many other unit operations which are required to remove. Uh, you know uh, used to remove for CO, CO2, etc. Okay? So, based on your requirement you have to decide what should be there, what should not be there in the plant. Okay? Coming to the economics of uh, synthesis gas by both methods, CO, H2 synthesis gas plants by either of the methods are competitive. So, we cannot say which is good, which is bad, it depends on the feed and all that. Okay? However, partial combustion is favored because of high cost of hydrocarbon fuel. In the partial combustion what we are using? We are using mostly methane, natural gas. Because if you want to do the partial combustion uh, of hydrocarbons to produce synthesis gas, those hydrocarbons are you know expensive. So, you do not want. So, you, rather that one you are using methane in general in uh, partial combustion method. So, because of that reason and then another issue is that insufficient heat transfer in, in reforming furnace of a steam reforming uh, method. In the steam reforming method what happens? The insufficient heat transfer takes place within the furnace. So, that is another reason because of that reason partial combustion because of these two things. Uh, right? You know because if you wanted to do steam reforming approach then you need hydrocarbons which are expensive and then if you wanted to do, do the steam reforming then in the reforming furnace the heat transfer is not efficient. So, because of these two reasons people uh, prefer for the partial combustion in general. And then continually lowered cost of tonnage, oxygen and production of acetylene as valuable byproducts or additional incentives in the partial. Uh, combustion method you need to have a oxygen low grade oxygen is sufficient and then its decreasing cost is often in general decreases right uh, with the time. And then production of acetylene is the other uh, possibility that is another uh, uh, valuable chemical that you are getting as a byproduct. So, this is the another advantage of partial combustion method to produce synthesis gas. But however, steam reforming is also having certain advantages like steam reforming is also beneficial with improved metallurgy uh, reformer tubes permitting advantages use of pressurized feeds. Actually uh, steam reforming reactor whatever is there we have a steel tubes within the steel tubes we have these catalyst particles etc. Right? Nickel catalyst particles are uh, inserted. So, uh, you know these gases when come they react there is a possibility of a pressure rise. Usually whenever any reactor if the hydrogen is produced inside the reactor during the reaction then pressure shoots up in general. It is very common. right? So, you need to have a 
you know, uh, you know certain, certain kind of tubes which can sustain the pr high pressures as well. So, nowadays there are furnaces, you know, which are providing such kind of advantage of using pressurized feeds. In India, steam reforming is favored when using naphtha feedstock because we know that naphtha can also be used for the partial combustion, right? For the partial combustion method also naphtha hydrocarbons are used. But however, if you have a hydrocarbons or naphtha at lower cost, uh, you know, economical cost or cheaper cost, then it is better to go for steam reforming rather going for the partial combustion, right? You should not go to the steam reforming if your feedstock of naphtha is expensive, otherwise you can go for the steam reforming. Byproduct H2 from petroleum refinery catalytic reforming units is considered a, a competitive because around 1400 tons of H2 per day are produced from total available catalytic reformer capacities of 1 into 10 power 6 barrels per day, right? And then most of this hydrogen is used for the ammonia synthesis purpose and th that also at refinery location itself. So, because of uh, this is the another advantage of having byproduct H2 in the plant. The references for today's class are provided here. You can find out these details in any of these two books. Thank you.